Can healthy lifestyle impact our telomeres and what does that mean? Telomeres are the caps at the end of chromosomes. Easy way to picture them. You can Google telomere and you'll see a picture of them. But you can think of them like those plastic caps at the end of a shoelace that kind of hold things together at the end. And they're fascinating because the length of our telomeres is one of the most robust predictors in all of biology of the length of healthy lifespan. Longer telomeres, longer healthy life, all things being equal. Critical caveat, because you can have really long telomeres, still very ill-advised to stand in front of a moving train. They don't guarantee anything, but all things being equal, long telomeres are a sign of health inside the nuclei of our cells at the very level of our genetic material, our, the, the bedrock, really, of, of, of human being. Uh, you can see evidence of vitality or the converse. And so Elizabeth Blackburn, who is a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, received a Nobel Prize in Medicine for her work on telomerase, the enzyme that determines the length of telomeres. And in work that she's done with Dean Ornish and others, uh, it's very clear that lifestyle practices can actually alter the length of our telomeres. So if you adopt a, a whole food plant predominant diet, if you engage in routine physical activity, if you get rid of toxins in your life like tobacco or excess alcohol, if you sleep more, if you manage stress, if you engage in healthy social interactions, feed, fork, feed forks, fingers, sleep, stress, and love, you get that formula right, it'll lengthen your telomeres. There's actually a, a lovely book on the topic by Professor Blackburn and uh, a one-time um, fellow student of mine at Yale, Alyssa Pell, now also on the faculty at UCSF called the telomere effect. Everything in the telomere effect for somebody who's focused a, a career on preventing chronic disease and lifestyle medicine is completely familiar. It's all the same stuff. So eat real food, mostly plants, be physically active, don't smoke, get enough sleep, manage stress, good social interactions. What's different is the lens to that world of evidence. Professor Blackburn and Appel look specifically at the evidence related to what happens to the telomere. So my view has always been what happens to people, what happens to years in life, what happens to life in years. They take the much more intimate view of what's happening to our chromosomes. And I think it is a beautiful, poignant, powerful confluence that all of the same factors that obviously contribute the most to human vitality and longevity are seen to do the same at the level of our chromosomal architecture. The telomeres are important, but what happens to telomeres correlates almost perfectly with what we already know about what happens to overall human vitality. What did Lee and colleagues at Harvard have to say about what happens when people replace saturated fats with other foods? There were two meta-analyses that had pretty significant flaws to begin with, but then were massively distorted in the blogosphere and social media that underlie the notion that saturated fat is okay for us now. It isn't. We get most of our saturated fat from meat and processed meat, dairy and processed dairy. We eat way too much of all of that. It's not good for us. The saturated fat is excessive. It's not good for us. And essentially what these two meta-analyses did was look across a range of saturated fat intake in populations. So these weren't intervention studies. These were studies that looked back at data already collected. The first was in 2010 by Siri Torino et al. The second was in 2014 by Chowdhury et al. And in both instances, they looked at prior studies variation in saturated fat and variation in heart disease. And both times the conclusion was saturated fat intake varies from the lower end of the range to the higher end of the range and rates of heart disease are the same across the range. Therefore, saturated fat is good for us now. That actually doesn't follow logically. So the, the argument was people eating a bit less saturated fat don't have lower rates of heart disease, therefore, Saturated fat can't be the bad actor. The reality was the ranges in both studies were narrow. 
the ranges in both studies were high. In other words, pretty much everybody, even at the low end of the range, was eating too much saturated fat. And the rates of heart disease were high and constant. So what this seemed to imply is that maybe everybody's eating too much saturated fat, and we're already over the threshold where it's doing as much damage as it's likely to do. Or maybe there's more than one way to eat badly, and Americans are committed to exploring them all. And so Lee and colleagues addressed that second question, critically important. The people who are eating a bit less saturated fat, what were they eating instead? Neither the Siri Torino study nor the Chowdhury study answered that question. So Lee and colleagues at Harvard had the, the usual cohort study available to them, nurses health study, health professionals follow-up study. So we're talking about over 100,000 people followed for decades. So they, they went back in time 30 years to see what people were eating 30 years ago. And then they looked at people who reduced their intake of saturated fat over the many years of the study. And then they looked at what calories replaced those saturated fat calories. If people reduced their intake of saturated fat and replaced it with trans fat, which of course has mostly gone away now, but was readily available before. So if you stopped eating butter and started eating stick margarine, you actually went from the frying pan into the fire. Rates of heart disease and bad stuff went up because trans fat's even worse than saturated fat. Okay, we knew that. If you replaced saturated fat with refined carbohydrate and added sugar, so in other words, you ate a bit less pepperoni but lots of snack wells, lateral move. There is more than one way to eat badly. That's a really important lesson here. So you, different mechanistic pathways, saturated fat doesn't affect the body in exactly the same way as excess sugar, for example, but all roads lead to excess inflammation, degeneration, coronary disease, diabetes, all the bad stuff. There's more than one way to get there. You don't want to take either of those roads. And, and by the way, it's really interesting, but I, I actually did a full text search of the 2014 meta-analysis by Chowdhury at all. The word sugar did not appear even once in the study. So they never even speculated that maybe lower intake of saturated fat is not protective because people are eating more sugar. They never even addressed it. So Lee and colleagues showed if you go from saturated fat sideways to all kinds of highly processed food with added sugar, no improvement in your health. But if you reduce your saturated fat intake and replace those calories with unsaturated fat from nuts, seeds, olives, avocado, fatty fish, rates of heart disease plummet. And if you reduce your saturated fat calories and replace them with whole grain calories, rates of heart disease plummet. I think the only question one might be left with at the end of all of this is, well, what about vegetable calories? Because aren't those the best foods of all? Yes, but the problem is vegetables tend to be so low in calories, it's hard to do a swap of a, a concentrated source of calories like saturated fat and vegetables, which are so energy dilute. So Lee and colleagues didn't address that issue for that reason. Obviously, if you cut back on saturated fat and load up on vegetables, fruits, and beans and legumes, it's all for the good. But they limit their analysis to what they could readily address. So the reality is, no, saturated fat isn't good for us. In fact, both of these meta-analyses, and, and this is quite shocking considering the pop culture dialogue, both of these meta-analyses, if you think about it, showed that the ills of excess saturated fat and the ills of excess added sugar are almost identical because that's what accounted for the same high rates of heart disease at either end of the saturated fat range. But if you actually make a healthy swap and start eating more whole grains, more nuts, more seeds, more avocado, and jettison saturated fat from your diet, less meat, processed meat, dairy, processed dairy, you stand to gain considerable benefit with regard to your risk for heart disease and every other bad outcome into the bargain.